Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, uh, interesting day for me. This is the last time that I will uh, uh, be presenting the city's financials. So I'm, uh, I'm honored and, uh, to be here. I've had the fortune over the last uh, 15 years to, um, and the thrill really, to work with amazing people here in the city, uh, here in this office, uh, and who really come every day trying to find ways to improve um, city services and to deliver a better product to all of our citizens here in Allegheny County. Um, over the years I've had not only the great uh, opportunity to work with the people in this office but in departments all over the city. Um, we've always had uh, great relationships um, with all the, the, the departments that we work uh, with even when we're auditing them. Well, we've always had great cooperation. So um, it's been great um, for me to have those relationships and to do this work. Um, and it's been an interesting times, as you know. Um, I came into this office, we were in uh, the throes of uh, distress status in Act 47, um, and uh, to be a part of bringing us back to financial stability is something that, um, uh, that I'm proud of and something that uh, I've enjoyed being able to be a part of. And I look back on a lot of those decisions and um, probably the, the, the thing that I think sticks out the most, the thing that really I think was a game changer for us in this city um, was our decision, uh, working myself working with city council, um, to uh, bring a new model to the table around parking and pensions. Uh, and rather than selling our assets to Wall Street, uh, we actually now direct revenue uh, from our parking taxes to the pension plan, and that has had a phenomenal uh, effect. It's really changed the game for us financially, not just for the pension fund, uh, but for the city as a whole. You know, we, um, you know, we're working in a in a situation of limited resources, um, and we're trying to provide best services, and to be able to find that revenue, direct that revenue to what was our biggest financial challenge. Uh, has, has really changed the way I think that people view this city financially. Um, so it's been a wonderful experience uh, for me uh, to help uh, this city improve. Of course, the last three years were unlike any other. Um, you know, the, the, um, the pandemic uh, not only changed city finances, it changed culture uh, of our city. It changed, it changed the way we work. It changed the way that we uh, commute, the way that we do just about everything. Uh, changed over the last three years. And I think that's reflective in some of the numbers that we're going to see today um, and, and probably well into the future. Um, and so the city's got some challenges ahead that they're going to have to deal with. Um, but let me get right into the, uh, let me get right into the, this year's financials um, and we can take a look at where we are and, uh, and, and what our numbers are. And, and, and we'd like to start with our revenues um, so that you can see where our money comes from. And uh, I think it's interesting to note that, um, let's go to the next one. Yeah, well, it's interesting to note that, uh, you know, almost half of everything that we do, half of all the revenues we raise, uh, come from two sources, um, real estate tax and earned income tax. Both of those uh, revenues outperforming this past year, surprisingly, I think, to some, that, you know, coming out of the pandemic that we see the uh, growth in both of these, um, uh, in both of these revenue sources, um, which bodes well for Pittsburgh uh, moving forward, um, you know, with, particularly around the income tax, where we've seen increases just about every year for the last few years, despite uh, what has been a challenging economy and despite what appears to be a drop in population, um, we are still seeing uh, revenue, uh, earned income tax revenue grow. And this year, uh, fairly significant growth uh, in real estate. We, we, we brought in three, and let's, let's go to the next screen. I think maybe we have a visual of this. We'll, we'll talk about the, um, let's talk about the expenditures first and we'll come back to this. Go ahead to that. So this just, uh, just so you see where our money is spent, right? Um, over half of the money that we bring in goes to public safety. Uh, and uh, you know our our primary job is to keep people safe, and uh, and and that's you can see that uh, that's where that's where the bulk of our budget goes. Go ahead to the next screen. Um, so the performance this year, uh, you can see that we had a fairly a very positive year. Um, 
our fund balance, that's our rainy day fund. That's the, that's the um, unrestricted revenue that comes in of $167 million. And that's, that's mainly because of uh, uh, our performance in a number of our taxes, but also because of some federal assistance that we received uh, through the American Rescue Plan. Um, and uh, we were able to, um, to not only uh, replace um, uh, or, or not, not have to go through layoffs and, and, and replace lost revenue, um, but we were actually able to outperform in a number of our other revenue sources. Uh, and so $167 million uh, fund balance. That represents um, a very strong balance. I mean, that's 26% of, of, of last year's expenditures. Um, that's a very healthy situation. Um, and um, again, mostly made possible, or in large part made possible because of the American Rescue Plan. Um, but the, uh, uh, you know, it's typically, uh, the, the, the Government Finance Officers Association would tell you that having 10% of your budget in reserves is, is, is a good thing. And here we are at 26% right now. So very positive number. Um, let's go to the next, let's go to the next screen. Here's what I was going to tell you about was earned income tax. As you can see, over these last few years, we've seen increase in earned income tax despite um, what is likely a loss in population um, and despite what's likely not much job growth. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but we're still seeing um, increases in earned income tax. Now understand, this is a tax only on people who live in the city of Pittsburgh. And we know that we've seen, um, uh, we know that we've seen um, incomes go up across our city. Um, it, we also know that it's a sort of a double-edged sword in many ways, that um, while incomes go up, uh, for some, uh, we've seen people leave the city because it's become too expensive uh, to live here. And so um, this number, I think, is we, we hear this anecdotally as well, that people are working more hours. Uh, that uh, and that um, th and that uh, wages are up uh, across most sectors in our economy right now, um, and so so it's uh, not all that strange that you see these numbers grow. But to to have that continued growth year over year is uh, is a very positive thing from for the bottom line of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, let's go to the next screen, and, and why I say this is okay. This is the local services tax. This is the fifty-two dollar tax, right? This is the tax that you pay um, if you work in the city of Pittsburgh. And as you can see, twenty-one to twenty-two, no change. So we don't that that increase in earned income is not driven by job growth. It's driven by people who are working making more money and probably working longer hours uh, than they were in prior years. So, um, you know, while we, we can, you know, we, we have uh, fairly stable or maybe even stagnant uh, job growth in the city based on these numbers, we're still seeing increases in, uh, in earned income tax revenues. Uh, let's go to the next one, okay. Every year, you know, we've been talking about the pension fund and um, as you know, 2022 was a very challenging year in, in our markets um, and, and obviously a challenging year for our pension fund. This is the first year we've had a dip uh, since 2017, 2017 to 2018, um, and a fairly large uh, drop. I mean, we started the year with around $700 million in the pension fund, and, uh, and we've dropped down to, um, give me the number, uh, we've, we're dropped, uh, I know I have it on this sheet. So we were up. We were up around 700 million. Now we're down around 630 million. So about a 70 million dollar, 70 million dollar loss. Again, now this is just the invested portfolio, right? This does not include the parking asset. Um, but, and we know that you know there's always going to be um, uh, ups and downs in the market. Um, but oh, we also know that over the long haul, that this number will grow. We are not. Di the good news is that we are not dipping into this number. We're not dipping into the portfolio right now to pay pension benefits. So this fund will, will grow over time uh, as, as we, if we continue to do what we're doing now, which is basically funding the outflow uh, for our pensioners on, a, on an annual basis. So again, a down year as expected uh, because of what's going on in the market, 
Um, my guess is even since the end of the year that that number has come up, at least the, the market has rebounded a little bit and hopefully uh, will continue to do so uh, as we move forward. Um, let's go to the next, the next slide. This is our bonded debt. This is our long-term debt. Um, and uh, again, we, this year we, we went out and, uh, and, and borrowed uh, $60 million for capital projects this year. So we saw an increase in bonded debt, but still a very, um, you know, reasonable uh, number uh, for us because we are, um, uh, while our debt, uh, we, while we increased our debt, we are still only at about 8.5% of the city's annual expenditures, which is a far cry from where we were um, when I started here 15 years ago. Um, to be at, at um, you know, 8.5% is, uh, is a very good, a very good number and, you uh, um, I, well, I should say the, the debt obligation is 8% of our budget. So we're paying um, $63 million a year in debt, uh, which is a far cry from where we were. Um, let's go to the next screen. I just want to talk a little bit about what we've seen uh, around pan the pandemic. Um, I talked a lot about this, is the, the effect of um, special events in two of our biggest categories, in uh, earned income or in amusement tax and in parking, um, that um, the parking tax, while it has yet to get back to pre-pandemic levels, and and maybe won't, um, we know that a lot of parking is generated by special events, and you can see by these numbers, th this number represents. Um, the blue line, you know, what's, what's going on at the convention center, PPG, uh, Paints Arena, PNC Park, and Acroshore Stadium. And you can see that in some cases we are back to the same number of uh, events. Uh, in some cases not quite back, but we are getting there. So we're, um, we're, we're, those special events have a big impact on both, obviously on amusement tax, but also on parking. Um, parking tax this year increased by uh, about nine and a half million over last year which is great. We're still not back to where we were. We were, we were up over $50 million. Uh, we, uh, prior to the uh, pandemic, uh, we were at, uh, uh, and now we are, uh, we're around $46 million. I think we were at about $53 million in, in 2019. So um, again, we're getting there. We're not quite there in parking. Uh, fortunately, the American Rescue Plan has replaced uh, that, that lost revenue. Um, but on amusement tax, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting back. We are um, uh, back. There was an increase this past year of about $10 million, up to $17 million, so pretty much back to where we were pre-pandemic on the amusement tax. And, you know, the, these, these big events that we do around the city, uh, you know, big concerts in the summertime, they have a real impact and, 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 and help, help the city really meet its obligations. Um, and we can take a look at it another way. Go, go to the next screen. This will be a, just a look at, this was number of events. This shows the number of tickets sold. Uh, and you can see, again, uh, at each of these venues, um, some pretty close to where they were prior to pandemic, uh, some still uh, getting there. But you can see that big, uh, that big um, swing upward, and, and uh, hopefully that will continue for, for all of these venues and for the city. Okay, and, uh, let's look to, and then we can take a look at the amusement tax as well. So you can see the amusement tax that's generated by these three facilities. Um, it, PNC Park is actually back uh, is back above uh, beyond where it was. Um, that's partially driven by the fact that they had a couple big concerts last year, um, and uh, uh, the other uh, the uh, Acroshore Stadium is back above to be uh, you know outperforming where it was prior to the pandemic, um, and uh, PPG Paints is just a little behind where it was prior to the pandemic. So. So we're seeing those, uh, those uh, numbers recover, which is great news for, for us and great news for the city. Um, and uh, uh, not all the way back, but we're, we're, we're slowly getting there. Um, the, other, the one thing I would mention is that we continue to um, have um, not much revenue from our, um, our nonprofit sector. We, you know, and and I, I continue to encourage uh, the administration 
uh, to get to the table and negotiate with our large nonprofits so that we can bring meaningful resources to the city's bottom line uh, from our largest employers and our, our, large non our large nonprofits. And then I think we have one more screen, just kind of looking at, you know, uh, what's happened, you know, in the time that I've been here. Um, you can see, you know, when I got here in 2008, our annual debt service was 19% of, of the budget. Uh, we're down to just below 8% of the budget uh, in 2022. Um, the uh, the long-term debt has fought, has gone down from, started out at seven, well, back in 20, 2008, 700, over $700 million, now down to below $450 million. Um, and again, uh, pilot payments are pretty much non-existent in both of those years. So again, I encourage the uh, Ganey administration to um, to get together with our um, our nonprofits and uh, and and uh, get get a deal that brings meaningful resources to the to our community. Um, one thing I'm going to say is this this fund balance of 160 uh, 167 million dollars. It is it is again an outperformance of you know, that we brought in more revenue than we uh, than we spent, um, and part of that is because of revenue that came in through the American Rescue Plan. But that's only reflective of the money that was actually transferred into the city for city operations. Um, there is still um, significant American Rescue Plan dollars uh, in the trust fund uh, that have not been allocated to this budget or to any other organization. Um, and while we started out with uh, the three, over 330 million dollars, and about 200 of that uh, of that has been um, allocated uh, to various projects, including uh, funds to the URA, funds to the PWSA for the lead line replacement program, funds to our capital budget and to our operating budget in the lap both of the last two years. Um, but we still have um, over 130 million dollars uh, in the trust fund. Uh, that will need to be allocated and um, and encumbered before the end of next year, uh, and and then spent before the end of 26. So uh, there's um, uh, work to be done uh, around how those monies are going to be allocated and uh, and and having that money spent. And while 200 million of it has left the trust fund, that doesn't mean the 200 million of it has been spent. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the funding that's gone to some of these organizations um, to fund projects, are those projects are in the works. Um, but there's, there's still a lot of, uh, of American Rescue Plan dollars out there uh, that need to be, uh, you know, put into, into service. Uh, and uh, so we've, we've got to make sure that we are complying with the Treasury Department directives on this and that we are getting those dollars spent. Um, in ways uh, that are that are helpful to this community and that comply with the uh, with the uh, rules around the co the COVID funding, um, but uh, that's a that's a that's a pretty uh, broad look of where we are right now. Um, we are again um, we have weathered the worst of this storm. Um, we've come through the other side uh, with still a very um, stable uh, financial situation. Um, in large part thanks to the American Rescue Plan um, and, and also to our own uh, resilient economy here in, in the Pittsburgh area where uh, we are, you know, we haven't seen, um, while well, 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 some people talk about the loss of jobs here, we know, we still know there are a lot of vacancies here. There's still a very vibrant job market here, uh, still a very uh, vibrant real estate market. One thing I didn't mention uh, is deed transfer tax. You know, we've seen massive increases in deed transfer tax over the last few years, which showed a very vibrant real estate market here in, in Pittsburgh. And while that number was significantly reduced this year, I mean, it was still an increase, uh, $700 million or $700,000 over last year, it's showing a stable real estate market uh, here in Pittsburgh and not, the, not sort of the growing market that we had in the, over the last two years, but still some stability uh, in real estate. So um, these are the things that we're going to watch over the next year uh, and, uh, and, and see um, how we progress uh, economically. Um, but for 2022, all in all, a, a good year for the city uh, and, uh, and we're, we're in a stronger position than we were.